What's up, everybody? Uh, another book review for you, and I know it's been a long time, and I apologize for that. Um, I've been traveling on business, doing a couple different um, temporary gigs, so anyway, just kind of got, got away from me, and uh, before you know it, it's been a long time since I've done a book review. But QBQ, The Question Behind the Question, written by John G. Miller. Um, this was actually given to me by one of my business partners and she she recommended it and got it for the whole office and so I of course read it and I enjoyed it. It was very, very, very good. Uh, basically the idea is is accountability and just personal accountability because as we all know if you've worked in a business that's larger than yourself um, we tend to you know separate responsibilities and things like that my phone is falling off so if you've worked in a company that's bigger than just yourself you know that we kind of separate job duties and departments for you know good reason but that also has its downfalls right like one department doesn't communicate well enough with the next department or next you know procedure or the people that are in charge of whatever comes next and the next thing you know you've got perfect scenarios for pointing fingers and blaming each other and frustration and, and all these things and that's all totally natural and normal however it's not helpful <laughs> and so this sort of um, is, a, is a method I guess of uh, personal accountability and how can you impact what you have control over uh, for a positive for the better right for a positive experience for whoever that that might be dealing with with your your customer uh, it gives examples of, of a restaurant he went to and a person that went above and beyond to take care of him he you know they didn't have coke products and he said you know would Pepsi be okay he's like ah never mind just give me a water and that's fine he sat down and a few minutes later someone he the the waiter walked up with a, a coke and what happened is he had sent his manager to go to a different store and grab a Coke and come give it to their customer. So um, each of those people behind the counter took personal accountability to make sure that they had a good, that, that their customer had a good experience. So the, the uh, cashier didn't have the what he wanted. He, instead of just saying like, oh, okay, have your water and carry on, he went to his manager and said, hey, can you run and grab a Coke for me? The manager said, yes, I can. And she went and got the Coke. And then, you know, uh, so personal accountability. Another example, which I really think depicts at least the, the ideas that I took from this was on an air, on a airplane that he was on, there was just a lot of chaos. The plane got delayed. It was overbooked, all these things. So by the time they left, like an hour and a half after their, you know, departure time, the entire plane was just frustrated and, and upset about their experience. And so, um, you know, it would have been very easy for the flight attendants to just be as, as you know, angry as anybody else and just be like, I can't believe that booking didn't do their job or that, you know, we can't take off because of X, Y, and Z and all these other departments that they don't even communicate with screwed things up for them and now they're the ones that have to deal with the bad flight but instead a woman named bonita um grabbed a whole bunch of headsets and walked down the aisle with a big happy smile and, and gave them away for free and asked if there was anything she could do and sort of had this cheery attitude and and he took note john when i say he john miller took note and and was just very impressed with this woman right and so essentially what she did is say like all of these other things are out of my control and they've already happened. What can I do to improve the situations that I have control over right now, right? Um, so it's not what he says in the end of the book. This is not like a codependency thing where you take on other people's job and save people from their own, uh, you know, lack of effort and things. But in the natural processes of business and life, you know, unfortunate things come down to your plate and you can you can either complain about it or you can take accountability and say, what can I do right now, right? So let me, as usual, kind of read some of the quotes and things that I 
uh, enjoyed about this book and things that I kind of highlighted. So he says, blame and who done it questions solve nothing. They create fear, destroy innovation, inhibit teamwork, build walls, and prevent people from engaging. Instead of brainstorming and working together to get things done, we blame storm and accomplish nothing. So blaming is like the number one enemy of productive business and, and personal accountability. Accountable people look for solutions, not scapegoats. They blame no one, not even themselves. So isn't that an interesting dilemma, right? So if you're taking accountability, personal accountability, uh, it could almost bring on a, a vibe of like personal blame. But um, as long as you're giving effort, in, intentional effort with, you know, a good desire, a positive intent, you'll still make mistakes. So there's going to be some bad outcomes, but you don't blame yourself and, and have that angry feeling of like, why, 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 why? Um, why are you so incompetent? Why can't you do things right? Right? You don't, you don't come at it this way. You, you come at it with a like, interesting mishap. How can I change it? How can I do better? How can I, you know, what can I do now? Um, so that's kind of the, the, the gist of it. QBQs, he says, how can I let go of what I can't control? If you want to win, don't focus on or commute, complain about the things beyond your control. Some problems are best let go. For all the rest, be good enough to beat the rough. And he, that comes after a, uh, an example of, of wrestling where you've got to beat your own opponent, you've got to beat your own mental, you know, trials, and you have to beat the referee. You've got to convince the ref that that you've done the right thing a good enough way, right? So um, basically eliminate all things out of your control, do everything you can in your control, and uh, you should come out with the victory and the results that you would you would like. A couple things here under the chapter, the foundation of teamwork. It says, would you watch a bald eagle soar and say, I wish he could swim the seas like a dolphin? Would you look at a dolphin and hope it someday might reach the heavens like a giraffe? Would you think, why can't the lion run as fast as the cheetah? No, of course not. How ridiculous. And then later on he says, want to strengthen your team? Here's an excellent QBQ to get you started. How can I appreciate people's gifts and strengths just as they are? So this is a really interesting thing, and I actually had a discussion with one of my business partners just today, actually, about this. Um, it's very easy to become frustrated with other people who have different skill sets because, of course, I focus on what I think is important and what my strengths can offer, right? And so it would be easy for me to, to see people that aren't doing the same as me and be like, why, like, why are they you know, that way? How come they're like lazy or, you know, you could label them as a million different things. However, like everyone's got certain skills, certain perspectives, uh, things to offer and to appreciate what they bring to the table is very interesting. In fact, um, sometimes the people who cl clash heads the most have kind of polar opposite, opposite skill sets. And that's so important to have in a company. One may be super organizational. One might be, you know, super extrovert, just uh, going out and knocking down doors, right? So it's like you want both of those, but if they're clashing and hit, you know, butting heads, then that's a problem. The risk of doing nothing, this chapter, and he's got some really good bullet points here. Action, even when it leads to mistakes, brings learning and growth. Inaction brings stagnation and atrophy. Action leads us towards solutions. Inaction does nothing and holds us in the past. Action requires courage. Inaction often indi indicates fear. Action builds confidence. Inaction, doubt. Action moves us forward in life. Inaction allows procrastination, that friend of failure, to win. So, some really interesting things. Just a couple more quotes I'll read to you. He says, She didn't say you succeed and then I'll serve you, but rather I'll serve you so you can succeed. As a leader, I'm here to help you reach your goals. Servant leadership is the QBQ way. Humility is the cornerstone of leadership. 
So once again, that comes on the back of, this is not a codependency thing where you save people from themselves, rather you serve them so that they can achieve their goals uh, as they strive for them, if that, if that makes any sense. The QBQ is not about covering for people taking on their duties and responsibilities or doing it all by myself. Doing so is not a service to others. It is a disservice to everyone. So you are not out there to, to rescue, but you are you know, there to do the best you can in the circumstances you have. And so how can I make a difference now, right? It's not to do another person's job, but to do your, your job in the best way you possibly can. And sometime that, sometimes that means working with, within the confinements of a group or a, um, uh, a department or whatever. And so asking the right questions can help you get better results in your business. So the question behind the question, um, not who done it, but what can I do right now with this situation? So anyway, it was a very good book. It was actually very a very quick read um, and this is a I thought it was a very valuable book as part especially if you've got teams and, and you know departments in your company so anyway go grab it I'll put a link below so you can buy it from Amazon if that's what you choose to do and I uh, hope to see it the next one adios